Hey everyone, this is the integrated Math 2 practice test for 10 ready. Um, question number 8. The thing about question number 8, not really that difficult from a multiply sense or even combining terms. The issue is whether or not you remember to work with the exponents. Anytime I have a term that's to the first power, and I know I'm going to do operations, perform operations, I'm going to put a 1 there. It just helps me remember. It's really easy to overlook and you miss a question that you should get the right answer to, the worst. So when I'm multiplying, and that's what we're doing here because there's no operating sign between the parentheses. It's not plus, it's multiply because they're touching. I always like to go back to the idea of big brother, little brother. This is the, well, I drew that too small so nobody human can see it. There we go. There we go. This is the order of operations pyramid. Parentheses comes first, exponents, multiplication, division, and that's left to right. If, long, if you could divide first as long as it's on the left, so I do that sometimes, add, subtract. Or you could put subtract, add, as long as you put dm, this whole system will work. So when I'm multiplying the coefficients, that would be the bigger numbers, or the numbers in front of the uh, co in front of the variable, sorry, not the bigger numbers, that doesn't make any sense. So I have the 3 here, that's a coefficient. The coefficient on x here is 1, well, same as the power. So when I'm multiplying the coefficients, I have to remind myself that the little brother operation is addition. So I multiply the coefficients and I add the exponents together. So it's simple from here, simple distributive property. Not that it wasn't simple distributive property before, I haven't done any major changes, just made a point about how you might want to consider doing it. So I do 3 times 1, and then I add the exponents together, so 2 plus 1. That helps me keep things in my head if I have that 1 there. Then I just want to make sure that every term in the front is multiplied by every term in the back. So 1 times 8 would be 8 and then the there's no other variable term so it just becomes 8x. Negative 7, don't forget it's when you treat it in add subtract it's minus 7 so the term says x minus 7 but when I'm changing that into a multiply divide relationship I can treat the minus as it's a uh, negative so negative 7 times 3 gives me negative 21 and this is x to the second power it's the only variable term left. And then negative 7 times 8 is negative 56. Now I just need to do a little bit of rearrangement to get it into standard form. Put the terms in order of descending exponents on a variable. And there you go. Not a... Oh, this should be to the third. I don't know what I'm thinking there. Sorry. Don't make that dumb mistake. Uh, which is good that I checked over it, so I guess there's a lesson in there. I'm not really the type to make mistakes just to show you how to fix it. I just make mistakes and conveniently I can show you. But make sure that you... I went back and just looked and said, hey, those should be combined, and then I realized yeah, I just wrote the wrong thing down. It happens. So this is the type of question that's not very difficult, mathematically speaking. But what it is difficult to do is or what I should say is easy to do is get into a test situation and miss this question because you don't take the time to write this down and you just kinda you know calculate or enter. Take the time to use the little scratch paper that you have with it or any of the tools that come with the test so you could do it online just to give yourself a visual to work with uh, and then you're more likely to get it correct because this is not a question that many people should miss but it, it will be a question that people can miss and probably often do so don't be one of those people.